Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is faint. And this was another request that I received from a uh, regular viewer, and I'm so grateful for this. Uh, I want to remind everybody, you're always welcome to make suggestions uh, for any verbs you'd like to see me discuss in the future. But now, let's move on and talk about what this verb means. The most common way that you are going to hear the verb faint used is to mean to lose consciousness for a short time. Um, and, and many times the reason this is happening is for whatever medical reason, you're not getting enough oxygen to your brain. Right? So uh, the word consciousness might be new. You might think of that kind of like as being awake and alert. Um, I hope this is not uh, a verb you have experienced, uh, but it, it happens to people all of the time and for various reasons. Now, there are a couple other ways that the verb faint has been used, but many dictionaries consider these to be kind of archaic or very old definitions. So you might not hear uh, these, uh, for the, these definitions used in connection with the verb regularly, but you might encounter them uh, if you're reading older literature or stories from the past. So a long time ago, the verb faint meant that someone was losing courage or spirit, or it could mean that someone or something was becoming weak. You should know that faint is a regular verb. To make the progressive form of this verb, all you need to do is add ing to form fainting. The past tense and participle forms of this uh, verb can be made by adding ed. Our base verb faint t -t ends with a t sound. This means when you add ed, you're going to make an id sound. This is going to add an extra syllable to the verb. So the past tense and participle forms should sound like this. Fainted fainted. Okay. Now, there is one phrasal verb you might encounter. It goes back to that first definition uh, that we just spoke about. So faint from could mean that someone is losing consciousness. Um, and, and again, it tends to be connected uh, to some type of medical reason or particular reason. An example of this might be the question, have you ever fainted from the heat? This can be a problem for, for some people. Really hot environments, not enough water, um, it can result in someone losing consciousness temporarily. Now, um, before we do a little more verb practice today, uh, I want to do a little bit of a review. It's been a while uh, since in one of my videos that we have focused on making WH or what I like to call more information questions. And I want to focus on how we make those questions in the past tense. So a WH question is different from yes or no questions. Those um, We practice those forms very often in my videos. With a, a WH type of question, I cannot say yes or no. I have to tell someone something more. So when we go to make this type of question in the past tense, the general structure that's going to work is that we start with a question word, right? we use did, then we have our subject, and then the base verb. So something I always like to point out to my students, notice here, I'm not adding ed to my verb, or I'm not using the irregular past tense form of the verb either. Right? So we go back to the base verb. And the reason for that is we have did. That is what is signaling to someone, ah, this is a question about the past tense. So if you want, you're welcome to pause my uh, video here. You can spend a moment looking at uh, this chart, making a, a few different types of questions, right? We can pick kind of from each column in order to build uh, to build a question. Right. So um, maybe we could we can do one here really quickly and I'll try and get my highlighter here on screen so you can follow along as well. Right. So I might say, when did 
they wear those shoes. Uh, maybe they seem like summer's shoes and uh, now it's very cold, right? So I want to know when, right? I'm asking about an event in the past. Now that we have sort of reviewed our structure, let's make some questions in the simple past tense with our verb of the day. Okay? And we're going to review kind of the meaning of some of these question words as we go. Sometimes as we're asking others for information, we want to know a place or a location. For that, we'll use the question word where, W-H-E-R-E, -E, where. Right? An example of this might be, where did he faint, right? Perhaps someone is telling us about uh, uh, something bad that happened to another individual, right? And you want to know, right, where was uh, this particular person when this uh, medical event occurred? Another question word that we hear quite often uh, is about time, and that is the question word when. We can use this if we are, uh, if we mean like time on a clock, right? Or if we mean time as in a date, okay? That could be a day of the week, a month, um, or kind of a, a month, day, and year even. So an example, uh, maybe somebody shares, yeah, oh yes, I, I have fainted before. Remember that earlier question from our phrasal verb? Well, Someone might then ask a more specific follow-up. They might switch to the simple past tense and now ask, when did you faint? Now they're asking for that specific time in the past. Another question word you might encounter is a question about manner. And we use the question word how with that, right? Um, an example here, how did they faint all of a sudden? Okay. Another type of question word, it's very common to hear, is the question word why, W-H-Y, why, right? And this is a question for uh, a reason. So many times in an answer you're going to hear because, uh, why and because frequently go together, okay? So an example of this, why did she faint, right? We might want to know kind of what medical reason or what um, can what conditions cause this? Okay, so what I hope you're noticing uh, by looking at these four examples is that they all follow the pattern we talked about earlier. Right, we have our question word. Right, we use did. I have a subject and then base verb. Right, so none of these questions, or none of these first four questions, I should say, have the ed ending, but. Right? Of course, because it's English, we have some exceptions. So um, on the screen here, uh, I have one final question that doesn't follow our pattern. Okay? When we ask about a person who is doing an, an action or who, in this case, has completed an action in the past tense, our pattern is going to be slightly different. And the reason for that is the, the question word who, W-H-O, is both the question word and the subject. So I might say something like, who fainted at the race, right? So now I'm asking for the name of a person or some, some indication of, of who that person is who completed this particular action, okay? Sometimes you will hear people use the question word who when they're really asking about the object of an action. Um, if they're, people do that quite frequently, maybe not the best English grammar, but people will understand you. If you're asking about an object, then you will go back into that pattern of question word did, subject, um, and, and then base verb. But if we're asking about the person who, in this case, did an action, you are going to use the ed form of the verb, or if it's an irregular verb, use the irregular past tense. Okay, now let's spend uh, a moment looking at some words and phrases related to our verb of the day, faint. And the first word we're going to talk about today is just the noun form of this word. Same spelling, same pronunciation. The noun faint refers to a sudden loss of consciousness. Okay. An example of this might be, upon hearing the grave news, she hit the floor in a faint. Okay. 
So again, we're talking about someone, oh, right, for whatever reason, uh, maybe it's really serious, upsetting news here that caused the, the person to lose consciousness. You might have seen something like this happen in a TV show or movie. I think it feels like that could be uh, used quite frequently uh, in storytelling. Now, the word faint, again, same spelling, same pronunciation, can also be an adjective. And as an adjective, it can have a number of different meanings. We're going to talk about three of them today. The first way the adjective faint gets used is um, in regards to our senses. So something you see, you smell, or maybe something you hear, a sound that is just barely perceptible. An example of this might be, there's a faint smell of cinnamon in the house, right? So it's not a strong s smell, right, where it's obvious, but it's one of those where you, hmm, where is that coming from? I, I can kind of tell it's somewhere. A second way the adjective faint gets used is to describe a very slight or a very remote hope or possibility. Right? So here we're talking about something that doesn't seem likely to happen, a very, very small possibility. An example of this might be, he has a faint chance of winning the election. Right? Not very likely. A third way the adjective faint gets used is to refer to someone that is weak, dizzy, or, or maybe very close to losing consciousness. An example of this might be, is this heat making you feel faint? Okay. Now, let's move on and talk about a phrase you might encounter. The phrase is, to not have the faintest. Um, and that is just an expression people use uh, to mean they have no idea about something. An example of this might be, we haven't the faintest what this message means. Right? So. Maybe this has happened to you where you get a text message from someone and you're like, what does this mean? I have no idea what they're trying to share with me or maybe they're asking me to do something. I don't understand it. That this uh, phrase gets used um, in, in all tenses. Um, so you'll see didn't have uh, the faintest. Um, and, but I should also stress there, it's always used with a not, kind of the, a, a negative. One last uh, thing for us to talk about today, it's the idiom faint of heart. Okay? This idiom goes back to one of those earlier definitions, one of those, we said, archaic definitions of the verb faint. Um, and so if someone is described as being faint of heart, we're saying that they lack courage to either face something that is difficult to do or possibly dangerous. An example of this might be, enlisting in the military isn't for the faint of heart, right? So if you're willing to, to join your country's military, right, you must have courage, right? Because the training is very difficult. Um, our military members many times are put in dangerous situations. Um, so this is just one example, I think, of a, a group of people that uh, generally do not lack courage. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.